going live. Let's do it live. All right. So I see a couple people already on board. We got Bill C. Uh, it says, just sing it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. And J-O-J-O says, Denise, daylight coming. I want to talk Medicare. <laughs> Uh, Denise, you might need to revisit your lyrical skills there. <laughs> uh, so just remember, uh, um, Jay, we just got done talking about Michigan football and Georgia football, and uh, so we don't need to, you know, uh, let Jay, you know, because Jay, you're still, you're, are you in Ann Arbor right now, or where are you right now? Yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm in, I'm in Ann Arbor. Yeah, so We're Jay still basking, Glory. Don't worry. Gee, I agree. <laughs> you know, the only reason you guys won because you played was because I went to Michigan, Jay, in October. I took one of my boys to go see, you know, Grand Rapids, Rapids, whatever it's called. And we went to nice uh, uh, Traverse City and all that. And by all right. the way, so check this out. Hey, Denise, not only did Michigan win the championship after old Josh stepped in, but the Lions went to the NFC championship. They frankly should have won, too. So both teams sucked until I came to Michigan, and then they both had massive years. And so it's funny because we got my son a Lions sweatshirt. We went September or October. I think it was October. I'm just putting it out there, man. Just putting it out there. There, there are plenty of new citizens on the bandwagon, for sure. <clears throat> I think it's an incredible turnaround, really. The, we'll um, see. Yeah, we'll see. It's all good. All right, so – so Jay, of course, is maximize your Medicare, and uh, he has a updated book. You, you have uh, the 2025 edition, Jay. You got a 2024, got a 2025. That's right. You got a copy there. You can show people. Actually, we're we're all out. <laughs> it's like crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. The worst salesman in history, man. Come on, Jay. I'm terrible at marketing. I'm I'm a very reluctant marketer. Uh, but this is an important year. More people will turn 65 this year than any other. And it's not 10,000 people a day. It's 11,000 people a day. Crazy. Peak Crazy. 65. So ma maximize your Medicare .com, right? That's the uh, website. That's correct. And then your other website for people. I just want to put down the front and the back of the uh, the interview here. So you got MaximizeYourMedicare.com. You have your Substack, which is interesting, which I subscribe to. I, I can't remember if I pay for it. I don't recall, but I subscribe to that. And and anyway, so how before we get started, Jay, how do people find you first and foremost? Sure, that the Substack is just my name, J A E O H dot Substack dot com. I put it in your chat, but oh. you know I can't connect for whatever reason. I, what I'll do is I'll send it to you, Josh, and you can copy and paste it. Okay. Um, oh. There's a free and a paid version. And so, you, you know, based on the other things that I do, there are things that I'm happy to say in public just for general purposes. There are certain things, as you probably do, I, I want to say you've got also a different service, but a, a paywall that, yeah. you know, there are certain things that are too private that, you know, because my first objective is to have people correctly informed and then you know, do I have opinions on top of that, professional opinions or personal opinions, of course, and about the contracts and, you know, whatever else is, is going out in the uh, atmosphere about financial this or that. So trying to link your uh, sub stack here. What the hell, man? Um, so it's substack.com slash J O. It, is that what it is? No, it's J O dot substack.com. I put it in your private chat on StreamYard. Okay. So I'm, and the thing is, I can, unfortunately, I cannot comment because I tried to connect on YouTube, but, uh, you know, operator error over on this end. So hello to Marie. Oh, I can okay. see the, I can see the, the comments. All right. So you can see the comments, though? I can see the comments. I can't make comments. I think that the world is, Probably appreciates that. <laughs> uh, Marie, 11,000 a day was how many people turned 65 now, Marie. That's Marie just asked. That's correct. 11,000 a, 11, a day are turning 65. This is peak 65. Uh, this is the year that more people will turn 65 than it. And that explains all of the pressures and crossfire. I mean, just relentless is what I would, is the adjective I would use. Just relentless. All right, so I'm putting the uh, link to your MaximizerMedicare.com page as well, uh, website. Um, all right, so so just real quick, guys, because many of you, we Jay and I haven't, I mean, we text it every now and again, but 
um, it's been a long time, probably four, maybe four years. So Jay and I were doing initially, we were doing, um, I think we did a pretty good job, actually, like a breakdown of Medicare for various states. It was, it was a lot of fun. And um, it, man, that must have been five years ago, Jay. Crazy. Um, and, uh, and Jay, he's just one of the, you know, I, I talk about Jay all the time in terms of the Medicare stuff. Um, and that's, and he, we just text each other, Hey man, let's revisit this. Cause it's important, especially given what you just said, Jay, but 11,000 people a day. And sadly of those 11,000 people a day, 10,995 have no clue what the hell they're getting into. You know what I'm saying? So this is where the information is so critically important. So anyway, so we did that and, uh, we haven't had a, a revisit for years and years and years. So it's a lot of fun to bring you back on here, Jay, for sure. So. You want to just tell everybody because we have a you know, obviously a different audience now than what we had five years ago. Just sure. you know, your background, how you got involved in Medicare and all this stuff and health insurance, the whole thing. So I think that you know the Substack and all of our and we have in common, Josh, right, which is to try to educate people correctly, objectively, yeah. about facts, to try to get away from narratives. And the narratives can be because of a war story you heard from your friend at happy hour, or could be from a politician. It could be from the popular media. And I'm partially guilty. I think I told you that, you know, today my new article is sitting in Kiplinger's, uh, which you know, just got posted this morning, literally, yeah. that um, it is very difficult to separate the signal from the noise you know, the facts that people have to have. And Maximize Your Medicare, the newsletter, you know, my privilege of, you know, appearing on your uh, channel, you know, are all really aimed to like, let's try to make sure that people have the correct understanding first. Yep. Control what we can control with the world that we have. Exactly. And not be pushed around by this other narrative, whatever whatever the source. And there's so many different sources. I can't spend every moment of every day just saying that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's right. wrong. That, you know, and, and it, I literally would not be able to do any professional work. Literally, that's how much misinformation exists. And so, when it comes to how I got involved here, so because of that. You know, my first background is bond trading, bond derivative trading, and ultimately insurance of every form, a put or a call option. I know that you've had guests discussing it. So this was my original place in the more, far more complicated than Medicare. But what it do, did is it explains that people didn't understand what these financial contracts are insurance me you know, people and my number one message to people is health insurance is not the same thing as healthcare my late father yeah. physician right he practiced healthcare he practiced healthcare yeah. he held you know he held a knife for a living right uh i'm trying to explain things about health insurance which is a financial contract ultimately and from there Right then, we have all this jargon, and but the reality is the jargon is there just because the carriers have to protect themselves. They they can't. They're highly regulated, as am I. Uh, you know, over the years, I think what has changed, Josh, is that I have to be even more careful now when speaking uh, in an interview or creating an article because what ends up happening is you know. <laughs> I'm the bad guy. I'm to blame, right? Yeah. This crazy Absolutely. person, Jay. You know, he said this or that, and someone misheard, and now we got this right. game of telephone. <laughs> you know, yeah. and now you know I'm the one to blame. So while I'm going to be speaking casually, and like you said, we've known each other a long time, you know, I'm going to be speaking very, very carefully, and not, yeah. and being careful to not saying the extra thing. I'm yeah. going to say say certain facts, but nothing more than that. Yeah. Um, That's it. And from there, you've got a, a whole set of other financial, you know, health care, health care cost planning, vital. I can't express that enough that you see a lot and you've commented on your channel a number of times, right, which is people are worried about retirement. Is it really a crisis, et cetera? Well, for me, 
one of the most important reasons that people may feel worried is because they don't understand what kind of risk they are running when it comes to healthcare cost planning. 100%. Yep. yep. Right. So I know that you know, you've got what 7,000 videos about social security, right? It's in the layer of, <laughs> of income that it provides. All right. Another way of stating it is okay. Let's also try to control expenses because yep. as you're considering retirement or retired, it is just as important. In fact, it, it can be more so, right? Because of the fact you know you're going to have expenses, but we're trying to control the unknown downside. And depending on who you are, you will have different sensitivity along that. You know, you maybe you're Mr. Perfect, you're going to live to 150 years old. Well, the reality is, is that, and, but let's just say, for example, you have limited financial resources. You live on social security alone. Well, it is entirely rational to choose a particular Medicare option. It is entirely rational to choose a particular health insurance option, which would look entirely different than your one-year-old brother who is Mr. Sick-a-Lot. Well, that person, that person has an entirely different set of circumstances. They need to plan differently. They need to think through it differently. The only way they're able to do that is to understand how actually insurance actually works. And for that, you know, I appreciate, you know, my, uh, you having me here on your channel. Yeah. So that's, that makes uh, sense, I think. Yeah. And that's, I, I couldn't agree more. I think the, the retirement crisis is ignorance because no one knows a, how long are they going to live? What could possibly happen? And that's where I think a guy like you can come in and say, look, Let's establish the parameters that say, if this were to happen, you know, it's like a put option, man. I mean, how is your sensitivity to the downside? You know, if we can minimize that to some degree, it's without, it's, everything costs money, but that, that helps people say, oh, okay, I, I get that. Because that's not what's happening now. And current retirement planning, Jay, is all like, oh, my goodness, you can be, you know, broke because of healthcare costs. And that scares the living bejesus out of people. And it limits people from spending, that right? Way. For example, they they have a nest egg and, and it's reasonable, right? I mean, in the sense that people, let's just say the average case and no one's average, right? But in, in Mr. Average's case, if they, if they don't know anything about healthcare cost planning, how health insurance works, how they can control healthcare costs, if they required lots of healthcare services, right? Then what do they do? Wallet. They don't. They don't go on vacation. They don't. They don't spend as they as freely as they wanted to yeah. under retirement because of the unknown. So to the degree that's why, for example, and I'm sure you've you've got these services as well as as we do, which is, I don't start the financial planning process until you tell me about your health situation. Oh, yeah. And you tell me how much you know about this, because now I can frame, frame, have an idea, context. Okay, we need X dollars for premium, but we need Y extra dollars because maybe you're going to have out-of-pocket costs. We need to know what the context is. It doesn't mean that that you know you're that you're going to sit on your wallet. <clears throat> it also doesn't mean you're going to like live check to check. It's just, you know, that that the solution is just different from person to person. And for that, uh, you know, I appreciate, again, you know, your time, because I think that you, your message, as far as I could see it from, you know, the videos that I've seen and your messages over the years has been very much of let's just get a hold of practical reality, yes. the way the world really works, yeah. right? And get away from, you know, because, clear, you know, all of the behavioral biases that exist in the planet, you know, they get attention. Yep. Right. We, and it, it runs either extreme and people look at that one soundbite and make overall conclusions from one single soundbite is just not uh, sufficient for me. Especially when we have, well, I mean, that's, that's why we run the planning though, to say, Hey, look, it's, you know, the, like I said, the parameters, man, it's like, can you handle this? 
All right, so you had just posted an article, which I just linked to on Kiplinger's, which is pretty interesting. Should you enroll in Medicare if you still have a job? So, uh, yeah, so this is published by old our friend Jay here. Kiplinger's, that's pretty cool, Jay. So you want to give us a little bit of the, uh, the, the background of this article? And what, uh, well, I want to go into a little bit more than that, but I just I thought this is pretty cool to, uh, to jump into. Sure. So what happens is the number one question we always get over a dec decade plus yeah. is should I enroll in Medicare now, even if I'm working or if I stop working after 65, have I missed a step? Should I have done something differently? And the reality is, is since the first edition of Maximize Your Medicare, the, the answer is now different. <clears throat> Meaning, you know, what you can do is the same, but what you should do has a now a lot of different options. If you are covered, if you are the full-time employee and you are covered by you are the employee and you are covered by your employer sponsored plan, you can delay applying for Medicare. Lots of people choose, okay, well, I'm going to choose, I'm going to enroll in part A. Yeah. Oh. And that would be fine with an asterisk, meaning that there are exceptions here, which is you cannot, for example, contribute, no party can contribute to an HSA while you have part A turned, any part of Medicare turned on, period. Mm -hmm. Now, what ends up happening is since full retirement age is now 60, you know, is approaching 67, like in minutes, then what ends up happening is someone asked me this question at 66. Should I now enroll in, in part A? Cause they had, didn't do it when they're 65. The issue is that they will backdate your part A coverage date to six months prior, which throws up all sorts of problems, right? For example, and you can see why the nuances start er everywhere, which is six months from t prior to today, <clears throat> excuse me, let's call it fourth quarter of, of 2023, last year. Well, let's say you've contributed to your HSA during that time. You've now created a tax problem, mm. right? Because you've contributed the max into your HSA, yeah. you could only contribute, let's just say, now your Part A date reads November 1. Right. You can only contribute 5 sixths, right? 10 out of divided by 12 times the maximum. Since the HSA maximum is pro rata share, right, per month. So now you can see why I get asked by accountants to talk why I get, and all these other parties, because now we've got a tax matter. And on and on it goes. Um, there's a couple of other things here, which is that Medicare and Medicare, and let's just call it adjacent, meaning Medicare Advantage, Medigap, that both will very like very likely not 100%, but very likely have superior language for coverage mm -hmm. than your employer-sponsored plan. So in Jay and Josh's landscaping company, we've got a small, <clears throat> we've got a small group. We have got this employer plan, 70, you know, $5,000 deductible, 1,500, you know, $12,000 family out of pocket maximum. Right. And we're sick. Well, now, and, and and you're sixty five point one years old. You're nine hundred dollars a month easily. I'm low at nine hundred dollars. That's at a competitive state. So now you can see what happens. You in this article, I try to point out without just the basics, too high a level. Unfortunately, yeah. right there, I've got a thousand word budget to explain everything here. So. <laughs> We lose you. Oh, he's it's in Michigan. Not, uh, so we just lost yeah. for a second there, Jay, because uh, your That's esteemed okay. governor shut off the internet. She shut off the internet. She <laughs> said, "I don't want you to talk to somebody in Georgia." And we lost you at uh, nine hundred bucks a month. 
Yeah. So, for example, let's say let's say for example we uh, required macular degeneration shots. Okay. Thank you so much, Marie. And so you know the book. thing is, is that in that instance, right under Medigap or Medicare Advantage, you have a fixed known cost, which is not three thousand dollars for this shot that you need multiple times a year. So now, if you add up numbers, yep. there can easily be these situations where, in fact, you should be on Medicare even though you are fully working, and then we've got the whole other set of questions regarding. You know, if you have a spouse who's not Medicare eligible, if you have a spouse who is Medicare eligible, now you've got a very complicated soup of different factors to consider. And at uh, here we go. One question from Bill C. If my employer plan has or not has or has not, I sure. guess drug. Yeah, is that you? Can you see that, Jay? That question by there? No, I, I see it. Yes, it's a fair question. So most of the time, and by most, I'm talking about 99, 90 five percent plus if you are covered by health insurance from your employer and yeah. that employer provide is an ACA provides you coverage which is ACA compliant it will have prescription drug benefits that meet the Medicare standard and that is called creditable coverage there will be fine print inside your group plan which says the Prescription drug benefits in your small in your small employer plan meets the standard that CMS has determined to be creditable coverage. And from there, if you have it, there's no penalty. I think that that answers it. Now, Andrew, this is why you need someone like Jay. I mean, this is not a sales pitch for Jay for specifically, but how would you know? And Andrew is not a stupid guy, you know. So, and Andrew actually had, I think he was up, he was against the wall not too long ago, Jay, in terms of fighting for his life. You know what I'm saying? So, this isn't, the difference between what Jay, let me just back up for a second. The difference between what Jay does and what I do, I'm not trying to discount what I do, but when it comes to money, that's one thing. When it comes to the protection to the cost of your health, like Denise here, Jay. She literally, Denise, who said J-O-J-O, she literally died last year, died, and has been brought back to life. I mean, literally, she was dead for eight wow. minutes. You know what I'm saying? So That's these, th this is why, it's one thing to kind of goof off on Social Security, and I say that with all, not Jay's doing it, but just a lot of people that say, all right, whatever. This is important, like, because here's Andrew. He was, you know, he got cut up, sliced and dice every which way to Sunday. And I'm just like, you got to you got to talk to somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. Um, Jay, here's a so certainly we're available. So certainly we're available first of all, right? It does not cost we we do not charge money for this and like you said Josh, this is not today is not for soliciting right. new clients. We have plenty, but my point is that we we will do this free of charge as long as there's not a these other complicating financial planning aspects that we that I just kind of even introduced, right? Because then you've got to think about a whole extra set of, you know, entire investment strategy, not line picking securities. Yeah. That is my original world, but you're talking about overall straight asset placement into accounts, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you've got another 7,000 videos on that, Josh, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> right. So, I mean, my point is, is that, uh, and then something I don't really say very often in my three minutes with Bob Powell on the street.com, you know, I, I'm, I appear there three times a month, every single month. Yeah. But the issue is that even once you have identified your path, let's just say it's Medigap or let's say it's Medicare Advantage, actually executing and crossing the finish line is has more administration than you might think. And I to urge people caution that what happens is you see price points which look like ties. In Medigap, for example, literally yesterday, literally yesterday, I identified seven brokers within $5 a month in a location, seven. That doesn't mean that I would just randomly choose one out of the seven. 
like absolutely not. There are things that are in in the paid version of the newsletter where I would say, you know, this carrier's too new. This so on a tie, why would you do this? This carrier, mm -hmm. you know, behaves in a particular way. Why would we do this? Mm -hmm. So these little nuances on top of just the general education and knowledge about financial contracts and health insurance. So, and like you said, it's so important. Wait, and my, my you say, title, right? say again, Jay, say again. No, I, I tell, so I'm sitting on this Alliance for Lifetime Income. We've got these like, hot shots from different uh, walks of life. but And there are a couple of us that are the same. Like when, if you're super ill, you're not looking at your portfolio performance exactly. compared to the S and P that day, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> I promise you. Right. Or if your spouse is ill, that is the, you know, we are not opening fidelity.com on that day. No, no way. We're not placed. That, trade. that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we are worried about, okay. I need to get by, pay the, for these medications. Yeah. How much is it going to cost? Am I in the sludge of an inland lake and I have no clue? Or I have a good command of facts. And yes, I need to get these medications, but I also know that I'm covered in this particular way. I'm going to suggest, and I'll be very biased and I will not apologize for it, to say, okay, maybe my book is overkill on having people have a little extra information to avoid that worry. Yes. To avoid that worry. That they no. know that they're not looking at their social security statement to make sure that, you know, they got every dollar, you know, with that month as said on their annual statement. That's not what happens in real world. Well, and along those lines about your book, here's my man in uh, South Dakota. Just want to say thanks. Your book helped my elderly mom finally decide on a plan and she's quite happy with it. Um, so overkill is in the eyes of the holder, of course, Jay. So if you're like, oh, man, this book's too complex. Yeah, it might be too complex for you, Missy. But over here, for uh, Homer's mom, it was it, it helped, you know what I'm saying? It helped a lot. And uh, like we said, though, if you're sick, you're not sitting there thinking, you don't, your portfolio is, doesn't come to mind. What comes to mind is, will I have coverage that will pay for the stuff I need to to continue on? And uh, and then you're looking at this mountain of documents like, I don't know what the hell I have. And so you're going to call the provider. This again, I'm not trying to make this a sales pitch for Jay, everybody. I'm just trying to say, for the love of the good Lord, I'd say, let me call Jay's office and see, can you give me some guidance on this? Because Jay might have said, you know, we've been through this before because I've been doing it for so many years. I mean, Jay is not a spring chicken, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, Someone said in your chat, I, I do want to address this by Penelope. Yes. If you're a broker Penelope, there, yeah, she's my resident advantage. bot, Jay. She's just a bot. So whatever she's writing is just a, it's an inside <laughs> joke. Initially, when Pen Penelope came on, I, I thought she was a bot. So it turns out she's a real lady. So anyway, you go ahead. No, th this is a fair question. And I do, and I think this is a very good yeah. place to address it. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, it is true, numerically, numerically, it is true that, for example, when some if a person comes to me and they want medicare advantage that would we get paid more for that compared to medigap factually the answer is yes factually the answer is. when you first enroll right so when when you are 65 if you are 66 the answer isn't necessarily true interesting okay so that's first of all so this is that situation that we started that when I, when we had the introduction, we have these sound bites. Yep. Uh, there, we have these sound bites and that's the only takeaway. In fact, I, uh, there was an article by a health care, health insurance think tank. And I think it's Commonwealth fund. Yes, it was that that was, and New York times came out with this, with, relied on this article, which basically said that people like me will intentionally steer people to advantage plans due to higher compensation. I can't speak for others. So let me first say that. Do, do I think that happens? Yeah, I, I, I do think that happens, right? If I thought of a 26-year-old newly minted insurance broker 
who yeah. requires rent. Yes. I, on a tie. That said, I, I can tell you that we, that I found shocking because number one, our first goal is we want your patronage on our books forever. Exactly. Right. So, the, so that's first. And there's the idea of fiduciary, right? Which is kind of funny to me, which is that we don't have any choice but to describe, it's a kind of a question about um, fully explaining the implications and ramifications of choosing Medicare Advantage versus Medigap. We're now into the weeds of Medicare, right? Which is mm -hmm. you're making a financial choice which involves a standardized contract, Medigap, a non-standardized contract, Medicare Advantage, at a cheaper price. So now it's that's why we started when we talk about you know puts and calls and options trading. Well, now you can use your common sense, right? I mean, if I change this to electrician contract, everybody immediately gets it. Imme immediately, right? It's like I I signed a, a contract with my plumber or electrician, and the electrician or plumber can never change the a single term or condition. Which one's going to cost more? It's obvious. Right. <laughs> obvious right and so th does that happen i'm sure it does is that the reason no and to some people if they live check to check candidly they have to accept the financial risk as a practical reality you will not hear from me don't eat and pay for insurance that right. that that simply is just not a combination but it's a, it is a very good, worthwhile t issue topic to talk here, you know, but in your... I just want to go back to what you're saying. So the electrician who you're signing a contract with who can't change the terms later, that's the equivalent of Medigap. Correct. Okay. And then the the electrician who says, I'll change it whenever I want, you know, on a yearly basis, that'd be the equivalent of MA, Medicare Advantage. Gotcha. That is right. Gotcha. Right. So which one would you be more willing to pay? That is not, that is household to households. Right. And now you, this is why I tell people when they think about their, um, that's, you know, personal way. circumstance, yeah. right. If you're Mr. Perfect, you have no, and you live on, on social security alone and you're living check to check. Candidly speaking, we don't have $1,800 a month for Medigap plus part D. Yeah. Right. I tell, I make up like little, little stories about, you know, I'm the old woman. I live in a shoe. I have 75 children. Right. And I live on social security loan and I'm in perfect health. That person is completely rational to choose Medicare Advantage completely. Right. But as a contract, there's no getting away from the idea that one is in stone and one has moving parts. And those moving parts you're starting to see some of the issues around it and that's all the crossfire more than 50 percent on medicare advantage at this point more than 50 percent of enrollees are on medicare advantage that is correct so let's talk about the email you sent to me earlier about uh you know what kind of change you see coming about all these things um they're coming sure. and then again this we don't know it's all speculation but what's your vision there jay sure i think that you see on medicare advantage on Medicare Advantage, I think you're seeing pressure. I think those pressures will continue. That means by implication that could I see the extra freebies, the extra yeah. benefits being cur challenged or curtailed? Mm -hmm. I think that that is very possible. For example, in many locations, there's the idea of give back, which is money getting actually added of the $174 for Medicare Part B, that some of that is being rebated via Social Security. Health club membership, OTC card, dental envision, etc. These extra things that are not part of original Medicare, but are being added on to Medicare Advantage in order to 
attract members and keep their membership, right? It's something like 95% do not change. Wow. Um, yeah. They do not change their Medicare Advantage plan, even though they should. But anyway, that's a different topic. But my point is that the pre the what you have is it's like I've like I, I saw a picture on Facebook. You've got these children, right? Who used to be children? They, they're taller than you now. I say yeah. years. But, but anyway, my point is that let's say you gave them an allowance, but not and before you gave them extra money if they got good grades. Right. Well, now all of a sudden, let's say, okay, okay, B plus doesn't cut it anymore. I'm not going to give you extra allowance for B pluses. You need A minus. And now they go, hmm, we got a problem. I've got, you know, I've got to watch TV. I've got to go play sports. I've got to do this other stuff. I can't get to A minus. And now all of a sudden, your allowance goes down. Well, now they don't have the extra money to go and buy, right? you know, apps for their phone or whatever it would be well in the same way that's how the money gets distributed from the government to medicare advantage carriers the carriers are like your children who are then distributing their allowance into the packages of benefits to attract mm -hmm. members well if i make the standard more difficult right to get this money What's going to happen? Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about by the understanding and the overkill. You know, my my channel about maximize your Medicare and the comments that I make is that people, everyone knows that the price is lower, and that and, and I didn't say I didn't say don't eat and pay right. extra, right? By that same token, if that's the only thing that you're that is attracting you, you need to think carefully. I've already stated annual contract that means every detail subject to change and one of those can be what happens if your allowance is lower yeah absolutely for whatever reason right and and so very difficult very difficult and from there jay just takes orders to be candid with you it, 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 j yeah i i would agree with kirk that's correct right which is that but that's why I try to tell, make it basic, meaning that to say, look, insurance, you're buying a protective layer. It's a question of, does this fit in your finances and your health situation as you know it? And the, the, the best thing about health insurance for the consumer is you have the information advantage. You do. Meaning that you know if you're a female, if breast cancer runs in your family. Right. Right. You know if you're a male, hey, you know, I spent way too much time during college at the bar and not nearly yeah. enough time, you know, at the library. And I've continued on through my 30s and 40s. You see what I'm saying? In other words, you know certain things about your health and lifestyle and your genetics that the carriers, they do not have yeah. any right to deny your application or change the price if you understand the rules so the, the that, standard in this case would be the insurance companies from the government you know the parent the parent said hey you get a b plus you get an allowance and the insurance company says great and then they went by all these apps and you know all this crap now the standard is saying no we need an a minus the government is saying to the insurance companies we need an a minus now and the insurance company said well that means we don't have as much money to give to, you know, dentures and all the other stuff that we provide. That is correct. Medic yeah, interesting. So Medicare Advantage inherently is going to be, we think, we don't know, but it's kind of some of the uh, the bells and whistles will be minimized. Because can be. Can, can be. be. Right. Can the, be right. The, flip side, the flip side of that is that, you know, the carriers are plenty smart, right? Yeah. They've got unlimited computing power and they are working to make these pieces fit. Right. Understood. And they're working hard. <laughs> right. In other words, th that they are competing hard one with the other. So what has happened over the past years, the allowance was high. Yes. And they know that 10,000 people a day and now 11,000 people a day turning 65. So what do they do? 
they're trying they're finding every mechanism to try to create this combination of benefits to have more membership yeah. which candidly speaking is complete common sense right i right. mean i know it's easy to identify carrier number one and saying right. they're the root of all evil right but the reality if i if i change the topic to any commercial topic the answer is oh that makes that's what i would have done that's what jay and josh's insurance company would have done of Absolutely. course it is I'm saying. <laughs> and and you know, if over the majority are now on Medicare Advantage, and the vast, vast, vast majority of those people don't ever switch, which they, like you said, they should at least think about it. That tells me that I'm not saying these people are happy, but they're content enough not to revisit what they have. Or, right. or frankly, they might just be lazy and be perfect. Or like, like my man, like you said, uh, Jay Kirk says, they just say, I don't know what to do. I'll just wait until something happens. But. Uh, that's, um, and I, I would just very strongly, this is why I like to spend time with you and, you know, people in public, which is if I could tell persons is that, you know, if that complacency in this situation doesn't, you know, can only hurt you. Yeah, what I'm saying. It can, yeah. only, it can only be negative, right? Meaning that, that I have no problem that you flipped over rocks You've asked me questions. You yeah. flipped over rocks. The conclusion is no change. That is 100% acceptable. The idea, however, is I'm just going to leave it alone because I don't want to flip over the rocks because underneath the rock is a scorpion yeah. that you could have identified. And to know, And that's what I'm saying about you knowing what your health situation is. Yeah. Right? Gives you the upper hand. You have the upper hand. Absolutely. Consumers absolutely have the upper hand. And now, you know, you can ask me questions about the Affordable Care Act, right? Because we have, you know, silly season coming. And, you know, that health care, of course, and health care costs being, it's probably not going to be the headline of, you know, election politics, but doesn't matter what party this is a very high priority item always always that's what i'm saying um some it's interesting my man gordon here says uh some may be afraid of the underwriting process in order to change what, what's your thoughts on that jay you seen that in your own experience yeah i do see it um you do want to have be careful right which is that it's nothing to fear right, right? because first of all if you're let's just say you are already a Medigap owner. Right. Your rates are increasing to a degree that become too expensive. You have the right to change, but you have to pass Medicare underwrite, underwriting or medical underwriting. There are exceptions based on the state. There's something called the birthday rule or anniversary rule. But you, in most states, you have to pass these medical questions, but that doesn't mean that you can be ejected from your incumbent carrier, right? Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't be a source of fear. Gotcha, All right. The same thing for Medicare Advantage, meaning let's say you're on Medicare Advantage from carrier number one and you right. want it and you've now thought through and you were Mr. Perfect and now you're 70. No medications, et cetera. It's not a, it's not a problem, right? Meaning... I can tell people that step number one is to look at medic at medication list, right? By carriers. And if it shows up as blank, I promise you they want to accept you. If it's somewhere along close to the line, let's just say you've had a some history of certain let's just call it you had a you know stomach problem, Crohn, you know, GI problems. Um, in that instance, it's going to be more sensitive. And you'll want to be careful because if you get rejected by a Medigap carrier, that information is shared mm -hmm. across carriers. Because, and good reason, right? Which is to prevent insurance fraud by consumers. Exactly. What was that? Right? So this is one, one of those things, right? Ins insurance carriers are the root of all evil. Yeah, but the flip side is they have to protect themselves against something like that because otherwise, if I could run around and cherry pick, 
and I'm the advocate for the client, that's what I would do. That'd be your fiduciary responsibility on behalf of the client. You know what I'm saying? Correct. That said, would I do I direct clients privately that with no assurance of guarantee? Because I can see what the implied questions are. They are they are sharing to some degree. Yeah. Here's the line in the sand for our carrier, and the different carriers will decide differently. If you require medical underwriting, very subtle. But sounds like if you're not, if you have no prescriptions, there is pretty much open game. You can pretty much go anywhere. It sounds like. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think that um, if you have no no prescriptions, and for example, I mean, and, and I've used the twenty thousand foot view, right? I mean, I of course, yeah. Yeah. right. But that's a very easy way for those persons, and you are not even if you are overweight, that you or what you consider to be overweight. Different carriers will have different standards there as well. Yeah, okay, interesting. But either way, it's like this guy says, uh, uh, travel nut, uh, I think you should evaluate yearly any Medicare Advantage plan based on your own claims experience. I mean, why What's why not? Other than like Penelope saying, she's just, uh, the changing is scary. It is scary. The changing, anytime you're changing. I mean, hell, Jay, just transferring from Fidelity to Vanguard or something like that. I got a guy in uh, California He's moving 800,000 bucks from his 401k to Fidelity. You like email me because I'm scared they're going to lose it in route. I said, dude, I get it. That's a lot of money. It's, I mean, it's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, anytime you're making a change, it's nerve wracking for sure. You know what I'm saying? I think that what that that's human nature on anything, right? Okay. First of all, uh, I would remind people when it comes to insurance matters that while you may, it, it I can understand the discomfort. Yeah. The chance that I would violate it is zero. The chance that the carriers would violate it is also basically zero. Yeah, more so. Because we are so highly regulated that literally now uh, I'm what is new since the you know last time that we spoke, Josh, is when someone calls me about Medicare most of my communications are on email so that we avoid misunderstanding. Yes. Okay? And if, and for the people who absolutely require phone call, I have to keep it a recording for 10 years. Whoa. <laughs> so you can see what I'm saying. You can see what I'm, I mean is that I can understand the, skepticism that our society has that makes sense some of that is earned but then if you put on your practical your common sense hat really i'm going to threaten my book my practice my you know my affiliation with think tank for and it's even worse for it's on part d we've got actually the opposite problem which is certain part d plans are not going to compensate me at all. So I'm going to accept the reg the full regulatory risk. Exactly. And I have to keep the phone call for 10 years and also get zero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, but you're just altruistic. Fact, man. You're just an altruistic man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't get me wrong. I, I'm I'm happy to share this information with Right. people that's not the problem the issue is that some person in you know the middle of timbuktu throws right. a rotten tomato and says i heard this crazy j guy say something and they misunderstood and you know it's his fault and they they file a complaint i basically have to stop my work entirely and deploy every financial and legal resource that i can get in order to prove it my my point which is well, just, that's all the issue. Is that everyone wants to blame somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That's, no, uh, that's going right, back, that's, going back that, to the that's insurance. Right. Business, the, you know, everyone wants to save the insurance. Oh, everyone absolutely. wants to save the insurance companies. So the bad guys, like, you know how much insurance fraud is committed by your next door neighbor? You know, I used to work at USAA, and there'd be people like, "I lost my wedding ring," and you're like, "And I just man," and these are like veterans from you know freaking 
and just you know it's like there's always scumbags man and uh and the reason there's a regulation is because the insurance companies were scumbags but also the the, the consumer were scumbags too and you gotta and it's just uh um yeah so andrew says uh right here i know an aca broker recorded all of our conversations it's sbi man it's sby sby uh cya it's what it is what um all right, so if Medicare Advantage is getting squeezed, I don't want to take up too much more time, but what's your thoughts on just general Medicare and Medicare subs or Medigap going forward? Is that uh, any is that going to be cheap? I think what the premium for Part B went down, and now what is it, Jay? Is it gone way back up? What's your thoughts for Part B? And- it's just under one seventy five. I think that I think what we are seeing in Medigap, I, I do want to just make the couple of points, which is in certain locations, just still brutally competitive. Plan G, 65 years old, $100 a month for a female is possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. That said, what you're having is, is that, for example, you've got other clauses, Inflation Reduction Act, um, changes to prescript, you know, negotiation of prescription, if that costs Medicare more and Medigap covers the difference, that means the Medigap carrier has to pay more, meaning that premiums higher. Yes. Right. In a competitive world, right? In other words, Jay and Josh's insurance company, we don't run a monopoly, right? We will have very highly qualified, competent competition. And we are seeing that, which is that while competitive, that what you have is more expensive over time, uh, more than people have thought, oh, well, I'm going to pay $100 a month. Great. I can afford $100 a month. Well, what do you say when it's $170 a month times two? So, you know, you just want to keep on top of it and know that this is coming. And I don't think that that is going to, but that, that also fits under the umbrella of things that you don't, cannot really control. Exactly. I, all I would say is that the car- the carriers aren't randomly increasing the rates. Right. That's not right. You work for USAA, right? I mean, that, that there's nothing random about the increase right. in rates and, <laughs> and especially in health insurance. Right. Because they've got to prove that they're using 80%. And let's forget the accounting machinations, which I'm certain exist. But 80%, they've got to show the regulator in order to get approved. Right? So just because your next door neighbor is also with your carry on Medigap and all of a sudden gets seven types of cancer, that's the thing that you could not control. So I try to encourage people just to control everything that they can and to ask until they're satisfied that uh, they do have the the important facts, you know, under their hat so they can make the common decision, common sense decision for themselves. And one of the things they can control is getting in better shape. I mean, that's the issue is that if you want to, you know, fight uh, with the insurance companies being heavy, overweight, all these prescriptions, well, Maybe one of the things that people can do is say, you know, I'm going to cut back on this, that, and the other, and it'll give me a better chance to be underwritten for maybe a better pro- product at some point. It was no different life insurance. Like I was, I didn't get, I got approved as standard when I had high triglycerides, Jay, as, you know, about 50, 20 pounds overweight. And I said, yeah, we'll give it to you, but it's going to cost you a freaking arm and leg. I said, let me come back to you. You know, and I lost some weight and I went low carbs. And uh, the next thing I know, I said, okay, now we're approving you as preferred. You know, and it's, uh, it's I'm not saying the same thing will happen in, health insurance, but none of these things are random. Uh, none of these insurance products are, they're not just saying, you know, we're going to raise scanless premium by hundred bucks a month. It's all actuarial based, all of it. And then with the health insurance, it's so heavily regulated too, and profit margin limits and all that stuff. It, it's, it's just, uh, look, I don't like the insurance companies any more than the next guy. I just think at the end of the day, it's a, it's an easy whipping boy that might, it might not be a, as bad as what it you know, can seem, that's for sure. But, uh, and I'd say the same thing about the politics here, Josh, and I know we are we don't have that much more time, which is yeah. that very frequently, for example, we've talked about insurance, et cetera, and then somebody's going to intervene and say, it's not supposed to work that way. And then some, some other, 
I, I tell people, you know, that's a philosophical debate. Right, right. Right, that's a philosophical debate. I'm not here, you know, Socrates, you know, 301, <laughs> right, was a, a, is, a, is the place for that debate, right? The carriers, I promise you, there is no, no line in any application asking you what your political affiliation is or what your religion is or what your philosophical views are on the role of government in in our in American life. There's there are those questions do not exist on any application. Right. You and I, I think this is why you know I appreciate you, right? We are here um and I'm here like stead more uh stubbornly than most, which is to say I'm trying to explain the world as it is. Yes. Not right. to adjudicate fair. Right. Right. I'm not going to be able to adjudicate fair. I'm not going to be able to sway persons on what you know, the definition of fair should be. The um, kind of like social security. People like, social security is never supposed to be like that. I said, I, okay, but it is like this now. So we can argue all day long about what it's supposed to be. What does that do? All right. So uh, my man here, how does someone get in to do what you do? I'm sure early, some early retirees might be interested in helping others in this field. Uh, look at Kirk. This is, is it Kirk? is Korean. We didn't know that before. Kirk Royce is Korean. That's Jay's long lost brother from Portland, Oregon. So <laughs> I was Kirk, saying mother. I didn't know my mom changed her name to Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> my my brother doesn't want it my, that I do not have. He probably would do not like me. <laughs> anyway, uh, in you can if you sign up to the Substack, I I tell people the best way to get an idea is this is the newsletter. There's a free newsletter. It talks about different topics. Like I said, you know, my I'm part of this think tank Alliance for Lifetime Income. It's really it's an education for advisors and consumers. For example, it talks about the role of how an annuity is a layer of income. It's not for everybody. It has a place yep. for some. But again, you know, it's not trying to keep away from the bias that you see in advertisements, et cetera, and still be correct, right? I mean, in other words, I, I'm I'm also not the person to say, okay, every person should have an annuity because it doesn't fit every person by that same token to say, okay, never a new, you know, right. ne never is, is rarely, the only time I would ever use the word never is I say never give away free options. That's the yes. only time that I, right. I use. I use that. You've been saying that since I've known you. Never give away. Uh, never give away options. free options. That's absolutely right. Um, last question: Would you think it's my man Bert Weeks, who's not very weak? He says, "Would it be fair to say G would increase rates faster than N?" Oh, good question. No, what do you think so? no. no. Um, I'm going to be in the minority. I may be in the minority. I've seen this rationale. Yeah. Uh, First of all, it has not worked out. It is this rationale has been there from the beginning. At, at the year that Plan F stopped, this is the rationale I, I've heard. Okay. Yep. What I would tell people is the following: is they can choose the carrier that these differences. The carriers are intentionally, intentionally setting this difference again like you like you've said josh right this is done by actuaries not by randomness <laughs> right they are determining it yep but the reality is for example and now we have data we have data from california that unnamed carrier x which may be amongst the largest carriers in the nation plan g plan n increase exactly percentage wise the same and um so i'm not in that camp uh, i've i will share with you the one thing behind the paywall which i'll share with you which is i am not in plan and camp at all and the reason is i don't want to leave the excess charge option to anyone else you're the buyer of you're the buyer of an option 
the function of the option is to shut down volatility, right? You're buying back the option that you're short. You're short an option to father time. You're yeah. short an option to moving rules and payments from governments, from to doctors who are taking a pay cut. This year, a doctor is taking a 5% pay cut, 4% 4, 4, 4 odd. Josh, if your doctor, if your one of your children wants to be medical doctor, right? They're looking at minus three hundred grand. Yes. In medical, in educational debt, easy, yeah. easily, easy. They want to be a primary care physician in the middle of Timbuktu in a city of twenty thousand. Guess what? Yeah. You're to tell that child, you're to get that access charge. The end. You need every dollar. You're minus three hundred thousand. Right. That is the completely rational thing. Now, what, the reason I'm being this enthusiastic, now I'm animated, right? Which is that you're the buyer of option to not be open to that outcome. Now it's up to the buyer. Is it worth the price difference between G and M? Yeah, absolutely. And you see what I'm saying? So I, that's why we started this with options talk, right? Which is, okay, right. now one's better. Now let's assign a price. Now we've got a person. Is it worth it to that person? And just going back to the idea too, that it's just all, I mean, I just think we just we will close here. But at the end of the day, the insurance company is, I, 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 we already talked about, I just, it's options for the consumer, what they can get for their money. And then the Correct. insurance company is trying to do the same thing within this band of, that they of, of the regulation that comes with it. So everyone's tight, trying to get tight band, a tight, tight, tight band. Band. <laughs> a competitive a recorded team. phone call for ten years. Tight yes. band, <laughs> very tight. So and very uh, regulated. Uh, all right, so Jay, good stuff. So again, maximizeyourmedicare.com. I'll put all links uh, when we're done here in the comments, but. The J Substack, I put a link in the beginning. I'll put again. So if you if you watch dot Substack dot com. That that to me is the place because then you'll get the yes. access to you know maximize your Medicare, etc. And you know, I'll have people's yeah. updates on different topics, etc. And they can contact and, uh, you through there too, Jay. They can find your contact. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All, all of that is a hundred percent, you know. So that's kind of like a very good central spot. Good stuff, man. Appreciate it, Jay. I'll, I'll send. I gotta go. I gotta go take care of my dogs. They're upstairs. I can well, you've ignored me for like ten years now, you know, because you've been on to bigger and better. So hopefully, it won't be ten years until you call me up. Well, I, I just hopefully. got. I got. I got so big, Jay. I just gotta leave the peons behind. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm okay, so. That's, that's okay. I'll get over it. <laughs> you fine. If you're back in Swanee, it. if you ever come back to Swanee, where your homeboys are, you know what I'm saying? Down here in North Georgia, you gotta let me know, man, for sure. Well, I, I do want to come to Atlanta. You know, the, you know, in Duluth, there's lots of good Korean restaurants. Yes, 100%, man. Yeah. Duluth, yeah, the whole, that whole Gwinnett County, man. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's your stomping grounds over there, Jay. There, there's a lot there. All right, Josh. I appreciate you. God bless. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks for your audience. You got it, brother. See you.